Hey everybody, just checking in. It's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, Dan Danema from our Myra circuit has a couple sleds that run. He builds pipes and has his own dyno. Reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to post some of his videos of him creating two stroke pipes and running his dyno. I said, yeah, sure thing. So uh, he sent over some videos to me. I'm probably gonna post them in a couple different segments instead of just making one long video to keep people interested in it. Uh, I think it's good content. It's pretty neat to see how things are done. I, Me personally, I've never been around anybody who's made two stroke pipes before. So seeing his videos and uh, seeing what he knows or hearing what he knows is pretty cool. So check this stuff out, guys. Hello, my name is Dan. And uh, I mainly race in Michigan and Myra. Uh, occasionally we go to Eagle River when we think we've got something that we'd like to compete against uh, other people in the country. But for the most part, we race in Michigan. I talked to uh, Austin Leake. Asked him what he thought about me doing a tutorial on building pipes. Early on, <clears throat> I learned right away that if I ever expect to win, I know I'm not going to be getting the good pipes from anybody else. I'm going to have to build my own pipes. So that's what I started doing. I bought this dyno, and I decided that if I wanted to compete with the best in the country at some point in time, I needed to learn how to build my own pipes. So I bought the dyno, and I do my own engine stuff, and then all the pipes that you see hang, hanging on the wall here, these are all dyno pipes. These are what we build when we want to try different things on the pipe. These are all champ pipes. These are all pipes from all different kinds of motors. And then uh, all the flanges, different lengths. We just try anything and everything. So I asked Austin what he thought about me doing a tutorial on uh, building a set of dyno pipes, which is what I'm in the process of doing right now, uh, especially during the COVID-19 can't go anywhere, so I'm stuck here, which is all right. So I'm going to kind of go step by step. <clears throat> I've done a lot of the process already, so I'm just going to quickly go over where I'm at on the pipe build. The first thing I do is I come up with an idea for a pipe that I want to try. And uh, on my computer, I have some software that will draw the patterns on the computer, and then I can print them out. And as you see here, you know, there's four sheets of paper here. So, But what's really nice about the software is it has uh, printer alignment marks so that I can piece them all together really accurate and tape them together. And this is the pattern I have. Once I have the pattern, I go to this, this steel. This is just 1018 cold rolled steel here. And I just use regular magnets, refrigerator magnets. I hold it down and then I just draw with a sharpie. I just draw my pattern onto the steel and I cut them out with an electric shear and just a handheld one you plug into the wall and then I end up with this. The thing about building pipes that I can't overemphasize is that all the dimensions on these pipes are really, really, really critical. They're sensitive. So even when I'm cutting patterns, I spend a lot of time making sure the pattern is accurate when I'm cutting them. And I take my time and I cut slow. So when I cut these out of the steel, I, again, take my time. All the straight parts, I have a big shear that I shear the edges edge straight. And this gives you an idea of what it looks like. This is the pipe. This is the header. The first and second diffuser, the dwell section, and the baffle cone or the tail cone. And then the stinger comes out right here. So once you've got all these pipes, all the pieces cut, then you're going to go to the slip roller, which is right over here. This is just something I bought. Actually, Jeff Oaks bought it for me. Great guy bought a lot of stuff for me when I was poor. So when I was first starting to build pipes, Jeff goes, man, you need to build your own stuff and you need a good slip roller. So he showed up one day with this in the back of his truck and I've used it ever since. It's great. It's really small. 
has one inch rollers which is what you're going to need to roll this uh, baffle cone here so these are the rolled cones before I welded them okay and the all oh, right here it's these this is I've got to make two pipes of course so this is the second pipe this is the first pipe and as you can see once you roll them in the slip roller this is what they look like and then you're going to go over and weld them <clears throat> weld these seams here and when uh, when we get to that point there I'll do another video on how to do that but it's all done with gas um, TIG welding doesn't work really good doing pipes for whatever reason and maybe the, the heat's just too concentrated but with a gas welder and this is what I weld with I have a really nice I bought this on the internet it's made in Switzerland but you just seam these together you don't ever use filler rod nothing so when you weld these together everything's got to fit there can't be any daylight between any pieces when you put them together see how tight those fit also once you weld all these cones together they've got a stack they can't again you know you can't have any daylight between the parts because when you go to weld everything together and stack them you're just going to seam them just with a gas welder with no filler rod unless you blow through them this is 032 I think it's 20 gauge correct me if I'm wrong but I'm not a machinist, so I really don't. But this is an old 32 wall, 1018 cold rolled steel, and that's what I use. So, um, I'm in the process of rolling this cone, and this is really hard work. These baffle cones are the worst because you're slipping so much of it through the slip roller while you're still trying to get that curl. And uh, it's hard work, but it takes me about uh, 25 to 30 hours. I stick right with it to make a set of dyno pipes and then once you've got the dyno set made then you have to make a whole new set for the chassis because you're gonna be cutting through these uh, cones and every time you cut through the cone you're taking uh, oh, about 40 thousandths out of this pipe so when you are gonna make this pipe for the chassis You've got to make it long enough so when you do your cuts, it's going to be this correct length. So in the header, I always, I know I end up making about seven or eight cuts. So I'm going to add seven or eight cuts at 40 thousandths when I roll the cone for the chassis and it ends up being a little bit longer. So by the time I cut it and roll it and turn it, weld it, cut it and roll it and turn it, weld it, which you'll see later on, the, this ends up being the right length. I just want to encourage anybody who um, really wants to build their own pipes just to take your time the first set that I built were really bad looking they were ugly and I have to thank Larry Ruglin. Larry Ruglin really helped me along on the process of building pipes I went there and spent a couple days with him and he just really was open and helpful to me he told me all the part, all the uh, pieces I needed to make to do the pipes, and that's what these are. Made a certain way, so when you weld them, you got to hammer all the welds. And these hammers here are the only I only use them when I make pipes. I don't know if you can see them or not, but this edge right here is flat on this one, and this edge here is curved. So when I have welded one of the headers you know around the header and it's going to be curved on the inside and convex on the outside I use these different hammers this Larry told me this is one of his tricks to get really nice looking pipes the other person I need to thank is uh, Greg Atkinson Greg I don't I've never met him we talk on the phone um, quite a bit but he gave me rules of thumb to follow when building pipes that have saved me a ton of time I never would have been able to get as far along as I have without him and I just appreciate him like you have no idea the other person is uh, Perry powered by Perry over in Milwaukee Perry <laughs> he's a great guy 
he's like my brother in arms. We talk and argue and discuss crazy ideas, but he's a great another great resource that I use. And that's just how it works. You're going to have to find somebody that will work with you and help you along in the beginning stages. But once you do it a few times, you get good at it. And these are some of the latest pipes that I've built for Champ, for uh, Dave Jovich. And, you know, these pipes are three years old or two years old. But I've never had any of my pipes crack in the weld. And you can see all these welds right through here. You cut through that header, turn it, and weld it, and hammer it. And it's just, yeah, the chassis part, building pipes for the chassis, man takes 50 to 60 hours for me anyways other people are probably faster so we'll uh, tune in next time and we'll when we start welding cones I got to finish rolling these and then uh, when I start welding we'll tune back in and you can see how I weld them and stack them thanks